Welcome back to Crypto Gains for another video. I'm gonna bring you some news stuff that's going on in the crypto space. This one shocked me. This one right here, let me find it, hold on. This one, Nomad Token Bridge drained of 190 million in funds. We know why it's shocking, because it just happened to Harmony a few weeks back. If this is sounding interesting, drop that like, give me a subscribe. Let me tell you what's gonna happen in the future, right? And this is not financial advice, please do your further research before you invest your money. All these bridges that have been created, you've got a flaw, because if it's gonna happen to Harmony, and now it's gonna happen to you, however you guys are making your bridges, there's a flaw, there's a loophole, there's something that's allowing these exploiters to come in and take hundreds of millions. And this isn't gonna stop here, it's gonna keep going with probably every single bridge that exists. That's what I think. Bit of silence there. Nomad Token Bridge drained $190 million in funds in security exploit. Hundreds of potential exploiters and even some uh, white hat do-gooders who intend to return funds, hold on, appear to have removed all of the bridges, $190 million in TVL in just a matter of hours. This is recent news, guys. I'm trying to bring you this quick, you know what I mean? The Nomad Token Bridge appears to have experienced a security exploit that has allowed hackers to systematically drain and, uh, a significant portion of the uh, bridge's funds. How? How? Tell us how, because, you know, Harmony wasn't able to figure it out. We've got this guy here. Uh, is it Stanny? Nomad Bridge is getting drained. Your funds might be at risk uh, and might be uh, uh, able to still withdraw the remaining funds. This, is, this isn't good. This isn't good for crypto because it's going to cause a big problem. And was it in ETH as well? Look, wrapped ETH. Getting actively hacked, wrapped ETH and wrapped Bitcoin. My God. And just for people that are new, this is what the Nomad Bridge is. You know, right about now, I don't even want to touch bridges. I don't even want to mess with them. Because what you're saying is from the moment you try to send money from here to here, they're getting hacked. You're losing your funds. People are going to have to start going back on exchanges now. I mean, is this, do you think this, it makes, it makes you wonder... When you think about over the last week and a half, two weeks, there's been a lot of people taking crypto off exchanges because they want to hold it onto them, you know, take control. This is going to cause a huge reason for people to start going back on exchanges to change from this chain to that chain because these bridges can't be trusted. This is a big problem. Watch how it sparks a huge problem in the crypto space. That's what I believe. And I thought that Harmony was doing something wrong. It isn't Harmony. It's all the bridges. And I don't know what coding has been used to make these bridges. Look, Nomad has notified a law enforcement and is working around the clock to address the situation and provide... Th I can imagine Harmony saying, look, see? <laughs> see? It's mad. Uh, and now uh, Nomad, I don't know if Nomad is a coin. Is it a crypto coin? I don't know. Let's just see if we can find it. But whoever that is or who, whichever company built that is now down a lot of money and it could affect the project that it's, you know, that whoever, it, whatever it is. Nomad. Uh, I can't see it. Maybe it's just, uh, just a bridge. Uh, Nomad land. I don't, I don't see it. If anyone knows what Nomad is, drop the comments down below. What is it part of? Is it part of um, the Near Protocol? I don't know. For some reason, I thought it was before. I might be wrong. Uh, but it says powered by Connect Connext. So someone let me know how this is, which uh, if it's his own blockchain, if it's connected to another one. So that was the first bit of news. I'm not going to dive into it more. Just, you know, it's, it's got hacked. Look at this. This DeFi-powered crypto ATM is set to change the way we buy and sell digital assets. A new campaign has been launched to show of the feature of this crypto ATM and the, uh, and the company behind it has global ambitions. So they're looking to drop these new ATM machines in pretty much every single shopping store where you can just go in, trade your crypto, put your cash in, boom, done. Buy whatever you want. And this is going to become a big thing. Velorex. I think I remember talking about Velorex before in a video a while back. After a year of development, Velorex is now presenting the DeFi focused machine. Why DeFi focused? Like, because you know, when you think of DeFi, you're talking like decentralized finance, staking, and all that stuff. Can you control, can you manage your stakes 
on this machine because that would be sick. <laughs> the only thing is, it's like being able to connect your, your, your wallet and then remove your wallet and then hopefully that no one can reconnect it. And anyway, I don't know. I mean, when you log out of MetaMask, you can't get back in without a password. So I don't know. It's interesting. The company has started to take prim preliminary orders for these ATMs for local businesses. They are attractive. And I think that the more cr that crypto grows, the more people are going to want to get involved. And, you know, it's sometimes can be hard for people to buy crypto you walk across anyone on the street and say oh bitcoin they say yeah yeah say how do you buy it they go oh, oh, oh i don't know i don't know <laughs> do you know <laughs> i know but you need to know so if they see an atm machine just standing there that you know you can transfer you can put your, your 10 pounds in or your 10 dollars and it gives you 10 dollars worth of crypto it's easy and this will help push the whole uh, adoption of cryptocurrency in many forms, I believe so. So it shows a little picture here. I'm not, I haven't read, I'm just kind of telling you what I read. Uh, it says, yeah, look, the promotional campaign shows a man entering the convenience store and walking up to the machine. He scans a QR code, you know, for his wallet, inserts some bank notes, and then chooses the coin he wants to buy. A final scan of his wallet means the transaction is complete. So yeah, that's pretty much what it's saying. Benefits of the store. Talking about benefits, I've just shared you what I personally think of my benefits. This is how it looks. Let me zoom in. If you're not looking at the screen, it's like a little silver container. <laughs> uh, it's got a nice little digital screen there. I don't know if it's touch or not. And then, yeah, you just choose what you want to buy. You scan the QR code and done. Cool. Uh, maybe this takes away the banks. I don't know. Because right now, you got you know, you walk into the bank machines. You've got them little uh, ATMs on the side of the bank machine. Maybe this is the future. Maybe can this feed out money? Can it feed or is it only feed out crypto? I suppose they'd be a bit careful because if they could feed out money, <laughs> hey, do you remember that thing? <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it, but about probably about a year and a half ago, these burglars come into a store because there was like a Bitcoin ATM machine. <laughs> they run into the store and smash it up and they're trying to break it open to take all the Bitcoin out. <laughs> and then they didn't realise that none of the Bitcoin was coming out. They're thinking, where's all the coins? I can't see them. It's because it's all digital, you fool. So, yeah, I just find it funny. Uh, let's see if it happens to these. People run to try and mash them up so you can get the Bitcoin out of it. Um, but, yeah, moving on. I'm trying to be quick on it. I don't want to be too long. I don't want you to go and do your, enjoy your day. European Central Bank bets on CBDCs over Bitcoin uh, for cross-border payment. This is big, you know, because, like, when you think about CBDCs, which is a crypto... Central bank digital currency. Uh, and this is basically banks creating their own digital currency... And if they do that to use cross-border payments, it's going to be big. And what interests me the most about this post is how are they going to do it? What steps do they take to do it? Which makes me start to think about this coin right here. I'm going to show you this one right here. What's pay? Because I said this to you before and still many people aren't paying attention to this. What's pay is one of those solutions for big institutions they're focusing on he big institutions banks and stuff to get involved in cbdc's making it super easy for them look at this look what's pay uh, let me just hi can i highlight it does it let me highlight no it's not let me highlight it's like every, every time i go to drag it it moves what's pay saw the potential for cbdc and digital digital assets to lead the next revolution in the payments industry enabling faster payments improvements in security all of that stuff to make it easier for these banks and institutions to get on and make a CBDC. If banks and stuff use what's pay to create CBDCs, this is going to blow like crazy. That's all I'm saying. Let's quickly go back to this. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Uh, it says here, ECB's interest in identifying the best cross-border payment solution stems from the fact that it serves... EBCs? I don't know. As the central bank of the 19 European Union countries which have adopted the euro. Okay. Uh, a recent study conducted by the European Central Bank EBC. Ah! Yeah, that's what EBC is. Uh, on identifying the ultimate cross-border payment medium crowned central bank digital currencies, CBDCs as the winner against competitors, including banking, Bitcoin, and stablecoins, among others. So... You know, they're wanting to use their own coins. I suppose that they just have like one coin, one European CBDC coin that can trade around the whole of Europe. That's what I'm guessing. So the European Central Bank, is that what that stands for? Yep, ECB. Interest in, the, uh, interest in identifying the best. Have I just said all that? I think I just said all that. Payment solution stems for the... I'm I just said it, it's repeated itself. 
Oh, have I repeated my... I'm, I, let me just go. I'm just going to go down. <laughs> Here we go. I should, I should have gotten this. EBC's opinion of Bitcoin as a... As a is, hold on. EBC's opinion of Bitcoin as a bad cross-border payment system boils down to the settlement mechanism of the highly volatile asset, adding that... Since the settlement in Bitcoin network occurs only around every 10 minutes, uh, valuation effects are already materialized uh, at the moment of settling. So what they're saying is that if they were to use it as a, a form of payment method, which essentially someone from Africa is going to send it to China, because every 10 minutes it gets updated and we all know Bitcoin's slow, uh, the price could fluctuate so much in that time. So someone could say, I'm sending $10. Uh, I can't do the chat. I need to send ten dollars. Uh, I used to be good at accents. Anyway, uh, and then that ten dollars could essentially be two dollars <laughs> or fifty dollars because we know how volatile uh, Bitcoin is. So this is why they're unsure on it. Whereas if they use a central uh, a CBDC, which I'm assuming that these CBDCs, these new digital currencies that come out for the banks, they're going to be stable coins. That's what I think, because they're going to want something that's stable, that's not going to change in price too quick, that's not going to be affected once they transfer from A to B like in, in, in uh, volatility. I think that they will be stable coins. I really do. But time will tell. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm not going to read too much more onto this. I just thought I'd share it with you. I found it really interesting. Uh, but they are coming. That's what we need to prepare for. They are coming. How is it going to affect the market? I don't know. Look at this. Crypto punks trading volume surges 1,000. 847 percent that is mad that's like 18 times higher or more than like 18 times the the volume coming in after tiffany and co launches exclusive nft connection uh, it says anyone can buy newly launched nf tiff <laughs> but, i just find it funny uh, but punk holders who own an nf tiff that's what it says. Can also redeem it for custom pendants. So they're dropping these little pendants. And this kind of ties into the news from yesterday. Because I've got another one here. Look. Tiffany & Co. Turning CryptoPunk NFTs into 50,000 custom pendants. And it looks like this little triangle pendant thing. But let me continue reading this one first. On Monday, the trading volume of CryptoPunk's uh, one of the sector's most popular non-fungible token collections surged by 1,847% over 24 hours. Uh, so because it's a big partner, if they're doing something with Tiffany & Co., uh, it says the surge in interest applies, sorry, appears to be tied to luxury jewel, luxury jewelry retailer Tiffany & Co. Launch its own NFT collection, which is uh, has a sparkle perk for uh, punk holders so they must have done some sort of partnership with nft to say look if you hold a punk you're going to get some uh jewels or something i don't know dubbed nfts <laughs> nfts i can imagine my mum saying it uh, the collection consists of 250 digital passes anyone can purchase nfts which i'm <laughs> it's just a name isn't it <laughs> which i'm minted on the ethereum blockchain However, crypto punk holders can redeem the NFT for a customized jewelry experience. Cool. After purchase, punk holders can select, sorry, elect to receive a custom designed pendant and a NFT digital artwork that resembles the uh, final jewelry design. So it would probably be like these little jewel things would just have an NFT punk engraved into it, which is kind of cool. I'm not going to lie, especially if it's designed by uh, Tiffany & Co. These are crafted by the company's in-house artisans artists yeah artisan artist yeah and uh because it could yeah uh, and inspired by the punks nft collection cool just thought i'd share it it's interesting interesting stuff this made the news apparently in coin telegraph uh so yeah and I, I guess this one is very similar to what i said before they've got a tiffany and co tweet here from the twitter it says we're taking nfts to the next level exclusive to crypto punk holders nf tiff transform your nft into a bespoke pendant can i just quickly play this uh just real quick i'm gonna bring this down i just want to see like so if you for those that can't see it's like all pixelated right now nice hey that looks kind of good you know if you're looking at the screen that looks kind of nice and i can picture people that looks sick come on you know if you saw that look looks sick and it looks like you can wear it on like a, a bangle, a, a, is it a bangle, a bracelet, or a necklace. That looks not. Let me play that one more again. Because that looked really nice. Like, play. I like the whole pixelated kind of thing. It'd be good if, oh, it looks good. Tiffany & Co's taking this to a new level. 
Look at that. We just all sat there in silence for 10 seconds because we had to. Limited edition. That is so cool. I would actually want one of them. I wonder how much they go for. If they're like thousands and thousands, I'm not going to waste my money on it. You know, because I've got <laughs> bills to pay and rent, you know. <laughs> anyway, Facebook's metaverse will misfire. This was done, oh, this is probably a day ago. I haven't refreshed the page, but uh, Vitalik uh, says Vitalik Buterin. So Vitalik thinks that Facebook's metaverse might misfire. Vitalik Buterin claims Meta, Meta is jumping the gun with metaverse innovation because it is far too early to know what people want. So he's saying that, Hold on. Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin, I think I'm saying your name right, doesn't believe that any of their existing attempts by corporations to create a metaverse are going anywhere. Pointing to meta as being one of one he believes will miss fire. Because, you know, they got that, uh, what's it called? Horizon Worlds. And he's saying that that might miss fire. People might just essentially just see it as a game and, you know, it's fun. But it's working, you know, people can go in there and talk and I'm going to be using it. I haven't forgot. I'm going to be using it to, you know, talk with my Patreons on a whole other level. You know, can come chill with me in like a whole metaverse and just laugh and share some thoughts on crypto. You know, say it's people having to take a train, pay 30 quid on the train. You just come see me in the metaverse. So that's coming. And if you don't want to miss it, become a Patreon. Because, you know, if you've got this tier here, the exclusive VIP partner tier, this one will give you access to that, the metaverse stuff. So, you know, don't miss out on that. Let me just quickly go back to this. Uh, it says here, uh, responding to a tweet from, uh, it says, Dialect, co-founder Dean Egenman. Egenman, I think that's right, who, who believes venture capitalists may be wrong about the constitutes, uh, what constitutes an ideal metaverse. Uh, Buterin said that while he believes the metaverse is going to happen, he doesn't think any of the current attempts from corporates such as Mark Zuckerass, because I call him Zuckerass, uh, meta are going anywhere. And you know what, he could be right, because when you think about metaverse, it's supposed to be free to do what you want to do. Like, it's not this world. You should be able to go there, you know, throw a paper plane and it just stays in the air forever kind of thing and do things that you can't usually do with no one telling you yes or no, no one controlling it. See, because with, Meta with, uh, with uh, Horizon Worlds, there's a heavily, heavily, heavily sensual control in that space. They can just close your account. And this is where the problem lies. That to me doesn't sound like metaverse. It sounds like metaverse because you're controlling what we can do. It has to be a level of decentralization for Because when you wake up, no one's telling you what to do. You can go and walk down the street. You can pick up some grass in your garden and just eat if you want. <laughs> There's no one telling you. You can go and shout at your neighbor, knock on his door, and just shout in his face. We do <laughs> just shout in your neighbor's face. You know, your neighbor be like, uh, young man, why are you shouting in my face, young man? Because I can. No, 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 young man. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying that you can do that. But in the metaverse, in, in Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse, they stop you. There's limits. You know, you, you get blocked. You have to have the bubble so you can't talk to certain people if you don't want people to talk to you, which is cool. I like that feature. I'm not going to lie. But I'm saying that, no one knows what's going to happen in the metaverse. I do think that this, the decentralized ones will blow up big. Don't underestimate uh, Mark Zuckerberg, though. Please don't, because Zuckerberg has got some serious good knowledge when it comes to creating things that people like. That's all I'm saying. Facebook was big. So it's very likely that his metaverse could do just as well. So that's what I personally think. But we'll see what happens. Um... It says here, the metaverse is generally descri described as a highly interactive 3D online world focused on social connection. Well, essentially, that's what Horizon does, with some, uh, some looking to eventually be powered by augmented reality. AR. <laughs> hey, guys, I bust out one of these uh, videos. I don't know if you've seen it, but I've got another video coming, uh, a few more, uh, just about, like, jumping to the future, time travel. <laughs> and one of them talk about AR, so, you know, that's coming if you haven't seen it. No, if you haven't seen it, check it. It's already out uh, at the time of recording this video. Uh, Buterin's comments come despite a number of successful metaverse projects recently being launched on a blockchain te technology. So he's looking at it from, you know, a decentralized point of view, and I think that's good. I think he's right. Like, it should, there should be no control by one authority. A metaverse should be open and free, free world roaming where you can socialize and do whatever you want to do kind of thing. 
Um, you know, so I mean, if if Metaverse, de- if Horizons decides to let people buy lands and worlds, because you know, can you imagine that? Like they drop these worlds, because you can go into different worlds in Horizon. Imagine if you could buy the world, the entire land that people create. Who owns it essentially? Is it your profile on the Horizon world that owns it, or is it actually you that owns it? Because if it's your profile that owns it, you don't own nothing. Metaras owns it. <laughs> And they can close you down anytime they like if they don't like your profile, think something's going on. See, whereas this, you have it on your, uh, your, this, your, your MetaMask and all this stuff is controlled by you, you know? So that's what I find interesting. Guys, that's all I've got for the news. If you liked it, please drop that like. Give me a subscribe. If you're new watching, I'm going to bring some more news. It's interesting. This one is the most interesting because now I believe there's going to be more bridges that are going to get hacked. If you don't want to miss uh, things in the future, become a Patreon. We're buying things right now. You can't see. I swear to you, we had absolute insane pumps with some of the coins that we bought over the last few days. It was shocking. Like, how can something pump over 100% in 24 hours? That's double your money back. You can't see it because they're secret buy alerts. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, actually, no, a super, a super alert tier. If you can afford it, that little bit more. This gives you access to my VIP Telegram group where I talk to you way before I buy, way before I sell. It's all in there. We've got big money in this space sharing great projects. Don't miss out. Guys, and the link for my Patreon is in any video in my info section. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Cheers.